If you deal with the money habits mentioned in this video, you will never be poor again. Before we continue, how has your year been? I hope it has been great. I'm back to these habits. Poverty can become a choice based on formed habits. The good news? These habits can be dealt with. Subscribe to the channel as we journey together, joining forces to deal with any money habit that smells of poverty. Now let's dive right into the money habits that can keep you poor. Spending more than you earn. Imagine your finances as a garden. Your income is the rain that nourishes it, while your spending is the sunlight that helps it grow. Now, if you're constantly pouring buckets of water into your garden but only allowing a trickle of sunlight, what happens? Your garden becomes waterlogged, drowning in excess moisture while the plants wither from lack of sunlight. In this analogy, your income is like rain. It's essential for growth, but if you're spending more than you earn, it's like trying to water your garden with a fire hose. Sure, you'll have plenty of water, but you'll drown out any chance of healthy growth. Moreover, overspending creates a cycle of dependence on borrowed water, like taking out loans or using credit cards. Just like borrowing from your neighbor's well when your own runs dry, you're not solving the problem. You're just postponing it. Eventually, your garden, your finances will suffer. You'll find yourself knee-deep in debt with wilted dreams instead of flourishing opportunities. So, just as a prudent gardener carefully balances sunlight and rain, managing your spending wisely is crucial for cultivating a thriving financial future. Do you know you can also spend too much chasing qualifications? Education is like a toolkit for life. It equips you with the skills and knowledge you need to navigate the world and pursue your goals. However, just like any tool, it's possible to spend too much on education, leaving you with a collection of shiny gadgets but no projects to use them on. Imagine you're building a birdhouse. You head to the store and buy the best, most advanced power tools available. Electric saws, laser-guided drills, the works. But here's the catch. You're only building a simple birdhouse. Sure, those tools are impressive, but they far exceed what you actually need for the job. Similarly, investing in education beyond what's necessary for your goals can lead to diminishing returns. Pursuing endless degrees and certifications might seem like progress, but if they don't directly contribute to your career or personal development, they're just excess baggage. Moreover, excessive spending on education can put you in a financial bind. Taking out loans or draining savings to fund degrees or courses that don't significantly enhance your earning potential can leave you burdened with debt and struggling to make ends meet. Instead of chasing endless qualifications, it's important to strike a balance. Invest wisely in education that aligns with your career goals and personal interests, ensuring that each course or degree contributes meaningfully to your skill set and future opportunities. Remember, it's not about collecting every tool in the store. It's about having the right ones to build the life you want. The next money habit keeping you poor is thinking your credit card is part of your income. Imagine your financial journey as a tightrope walk across a vast chasm. Each step you take represents a financial decision, and your balance determines whether you reach the other side safely or plummet into the abyss of debt. Now picture credit cards as a pair of sleek, high-tech stilts. They promise to elevate you above the financial challenges, allowing you to stride confidently across the tightrope with ease. At first, it's exhilarating. You feel like you're floating above your worries, untethered from the constraints of your income. But here's the twist. Those stilts are powered by borrowed energy. With each step, you're accumulating a debt to the credit card company, like a tab that grows heavier with every purchase. And while you're soaring above the chasm for now, you're also one misstep away from a catastrophic fall. The problem with relying too heavily on credit cards is that it distorts your perception of financial reality. It's like wearing rose-tinted glasses while walking the tightrope. You might not see the dangers until it's too late. The convenience of swiping a card can numb you to the consequences of overspending, leading to a false sense of security until the bill comes due. Moreover, the interest on credit card debt is like a relentless wind threatening to knock you off balance. With each gust, your debt grows larger making it harder to maintain your footing on the tightrope of financial stability. To navigate this precarious path safely, it's essential to use credit cards judiciously, treating them as tools rather than crutches. Balance is key. Maintain a steady pace of spending within your means, and always keep an eye on the solid ground of responsible financial management. After all, the true triumph lies not in how high you soar on borrowed stilts, but in your ability to walk the tightrope with confidence and control. By the way, how do you see your credit cards? Comment below. Let us continue. The next money habit keeping you poor is ignoring your emergency fund. 
Consider your finances as a grand adventure, with your emergency fund as the trusty map guiding you through uncharted territories. Now, if you toss that map aside thinking, I'll find my way when I need to, you're essentially wandering into the wild without a compass. Imagine you're trekking through a dense forest when suddenly you encounter a deep ravine blocking your path. Without that trusty map, you're left scrambling to find a way around, wasting precious time and energy. Meanwhile, your savvy companion who kept their map close at hand calmly navigates a safe route, barely breaking a sweat. Ignoring your emergency fund is like embarking on this journey without your essential guide. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, a sudden illness, a job loss, or a major car repair, you're left stranded without a safety net. It's not just about preparing for the worst. It's about empowering yourself to tackle any obstacle with confidence and resilience. So, don't leave your financial fate to chance. Keep that emergency fund close and let it be your guiding star through life's unpredictable terrain. Meet Pauline and Adam, two contrasting characters in the grand narrative of financial responsibility. Pauline is a free spirit, always living in the moment, with little regard for tomorrow. She sees her finances as mere numbers on a page, something to worry about eventually. Pauline scoffs at the idea of an emergency fund, preferring to spend her money on spontaneous adventures and indulgences. Life's too short to worry about what-ifs, she declares, dismissing any notion of financial planning. On the other hand, there's Adam, the epitome of prudence and foresight. He approaches his finances with methodical precision, carefully allocating funds for every conceivable scenario. Adam understands the importance of an emergency fund. It's his safety net in a world of uncertainties. He diligently saves a portion of his income, knowing that financial storms can strike at any moment. Now, let's fast forward to a stormy day in their lives. Pauline is caught off guard when her car breaks down unexpectedly. With no emergency fund to fall back on, she's left scrambling to cover the costly repairs, resorting to borrowing money from friends and family, adding stress to an already tense situation. Meanwhile, Adam faces a similar predicament with a calm demeanor. Thanks to his emergency fund, he handles the situation swiftly and independently, avoiding the turmoil that Pauline finds herself in. In this tale of contrasting characters, Pauline's disregard for her financial future leads her down a path of uncertainty and dependency. While Adam's foresight and preparation empower him to weather life's storms with confidence and resilience. So, the next time you're tempted to follow Pauline's carefree approach, remember the wisdom of Adam. A little planning today can save you from a world of worry tomorrow. The next money habit keeping you poor is not investing. If you don't invest your money, you won't be able to grow your wealth and achieve your financial goals. Absolutely. Financial freedom doesn't come from wishful thinking or hoping for magic to happen. It's about making deliberate, strategic decisions today to set yourself up for success in the future. Investing money wisely is one of the most powerful ways to grow wealth over time, thanks to the magic of compound interest. By planting the seeds of your money through investments, you allow them to grow and multiply paving the way for financial security and freedom down the road. Investing is like tending to a flourishing garden of wealth. Just as a skilled gardener carefully selects the right seeds, nurtures the soil, and tends to the plants with care, an investor strategically chooses assets, cultivates their portfolio, and monitors the markets with diligence. Each investment is like a unique plant, with its own growth trajectory and potential. Some may require patience, taking time to mature and bear fruit, while others may thrive quickly and abundantly. Just as a diverse garden is resilient to pests and diseases, a well-diversified investment portfolio can weather market volatility and economic fluctuations. And much like how a bountiful garden yields a harvest of delights, a well-nurtured investment portfolio can provide the fruits of financial freedom, offering opportunities for wealth accumulation, passive income streams, and a secure future. So, just as a gardener tends to their garden with dedication and foresight, an investor tends to their portfolio with astuteness and vision, reaping the rewards of their careful cultivation over time. Many wealthy individuals have attributed their success to a long-term investment mindset. Let's take Warren Buffett, one of the most renowned investors, as an example. Buffett is famous for his patient, long-term approach to investing. He once famously said, Our favorite holding period is forever. Buffett's strategy involves carefully selecting solid companies with strong fundamentals and holding on to them for the long haul, allowing time and compounding to work their magic. His investment philosophy is rooted in the belief that the stock market is a vehicle for long-term wealth creation, 
rather than short-term speculation. Similarly, another example is Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. Bezos famously focused on long-term growth and innovation rather than short-term profits. He consistently reinvested Amazon's earnings back into the company, fueling its expansion and diversification over many years. This long-term approach ultimately transformed Amazon from an online bookstore into one of the world's largest and most influential companies. These examples highlight the power of patience and persistence in the world of investing. By focusing on the long term and resisting the urge to chase short-term gains or react impulsively to market fluctuations, individuals can position themselves for sustainable wealth accumulation and financial success over time. The next money habit keeping you poor is living paycheck to paycheck. If you receive your salary today and in some hours down the line, you are waiting for the next payday. It is a sign of financial disaster. What to do if you are stuck in this cycle of living paycheck to paycheck? Imagine your finances as a thrilling adventure, with you as the intrepid explorer, navigating through a jungle of expenses and income streams. Each paycheck is like a pit stop along your journey, providing you with resources to fuel your expedition. But here's the catch. Instead of smoothly cruising through this financial jungle, you find yourself trapped in a cycle, constantly running low on supplies and barely making it to the next checkpoint. It's like being stuck on a treadmill where you're always moving but never really getting ahead. Now picture yourself as the hero of this adventure, determined to break free from this cycle and conquer the challenges ahead. You sharpen your financial machete and dive deep into the underbrush, ready to slash away at unnecessary expenses and clear a path towards financial freedom. First, you must map out your territory, understanding every twist and turn of your income and expenses. This is your blueprint for success, guiding you as you navigate through the dense jungle of your finances. With your map in hand, you embark on a quest to cut down on unnecessary spending. You dodge the traps of impulse buys and escape the clutches of wasteful subscriptions, emerging victorious with a newfound sense of control over your finances. But your journey doesn't end there. To truly break free from the paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck cycle, you must seek out hidden treasures of opportunity. You uncover hidden streams of income, harnessing their power to bolster your financial reserves and fortify your defenses against unexpected obstacles. As you journey deeper into the jungle, you confront the towering mountains of debt that threaten to block your path. With determination and grit, you scale these obstacles, chipping away at the rock face of debt until you emerge victorious on the other side. With each victory, you grow stronger and more resilient, forging ahead with unwavering determination. You build a sturdy bridge of savings to carry you safely across turbulent waters, and you plant the seeds of investment that will one day blossom into a lush garden of financial abundance. Finally, after much perseverance and hard work, you emerge from the jungle victorious, leaving the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck far behind you. You stand tall atop the summit of financial freedom, basking in the warm glow of success and looking out over the vast horizon of possibility that stretches out before you. And as you gaze upon this new world of opportunity, you know that no challenge is too great, no obstacle too daunting, for you are the master of your financial destiny, the hero of your own adventure. The next money habit keeping you poor is the do-it-yourself DIY trap. Imagine yourself as the captain of a grand ship, sailing across the vast expanse of the entrepreneurial sea. Your vessel is sleek, your crew is skilled, and the wind is at your back. But as you navigate the choppy waters of business, you realize that you can't do it all alone. You stand at the helm surveying the horizon with a keen eye, but your hands are tied up in the rigging, your mind consumed with the minutia of daily operations. You find yourself bogged down in tasks that drain your energy and distract you from your true calling as a visionary leader. That's when you have a revelation. You are the captain, the master of your destiny. But you don't have to be the one scrubbing the decks or hoisting the sails. No, you have a crew for that. A crew of experts who can handle the day-to-day -day tasks while you focus on charting the course ahead. You realize that by trying to do everything yourself, you're not only wasting your own precious time, but also missing out on the opportunity to leverage the specialized skills of others. Just as you wouldn't ask your navigator to man the cannons or your cook to mend the sails, you shouldn't burden yourself with tasks that fall outside your expertise. So you begin to delegate, entrusting each member of your crew with the responsibilities that align with their skills and strengths. You hire a seasoned quartermaster to manage your supplies, a skilled carpenter to repair your ship, and a talented navigator to plot your course. 
With the weight of mundane tasks lifted from your shoulders, you're free to focus on what you do best. Steering your ship towards new horizons, navigating uncharted waters, and leading your crew with clarity and vision. As a result, your ship sails smoother, faster, and more efficiently than ever before. Your crew is happier and more motivated, knowing that they're valued for their expertise. And you, dear captain, are free to pursue your dreams and aspirations with a renewed sense of purpose and passion. So the next time you find yourself drowning in a sea of tasks, remember, you're the captain of your ship. But you don't have to sail alone. Surround yourself with a skilled crew, delegate with confidence, and watch as your business sets sail towards success. The next money habit keeping you poor is not negotiating. If you don't negotiate your bills, you'll end up paying more than you need to for things like cable, internet, and cell phone services. Think of negotiating your bills as a strategic battle in the world of personal finance, where the victor emerges with more money in their pocket. Imagine you're a savvy merchant in a bustling marketplace, bartering with vendors to get the best price for your goods. Each bill you receive is like a challenge, a chance to haggle and wrangle until you secure the most favorable deal. Take your cable bill, for instance. It arrives like a gauntlet thrown down before you, daring you to accept its terms without question. But you, the shrewd negotiator, refuse to back down. Armed with knowledge of competitor rates and a charming demeanor, you engage in a spirited debate with your cable provider, ultimately slashing your bill down to a more reasonable figure. Next, you turn your attention to your internet service provider, a formidable opponent known for their exorbitant fees. But you are undaunted. With a combination of charm, persuasion, and perhaps a hint of righteous indignation, you negotiate a lower rate, saving yourself a small fortune in the process. Finally, you confront your cell phone bill, the final boss in your quest for savings. Like a seasoned warrior, you enter into battle with your provider, armed with research, resolve, and a steely determination to come out on top. And come out on top you do, emerging victorious with a reduced bill and a sense of triumph. In the end, negotiating your bills isn't just about saving money. It's about taking control of your finances and refusing to settle for anything less than the best. So the next time a bill arrives at your door, don your negotiating hat. Sharpen your bargaining skills and prepare to do battle. The savings you reap will be well worth the effort. The next money habit keeping you poor is not having financial goals. If you don't have specific financial goals, it's hard to know what you're working towards and you may end up spending money aimlessly. Setting financial goals is crucial for creating a roadmap to achieve your desired financial future. Without clear objectives, it's easy to fall into the trap of spending money without purpose, which can hinder your ability to build wealth save for important milestones, or secure your financial stability. By defining specific, measurable goals, you give yourself direction and motivation to make more intentional decisions with your money. Whether it's saving for retirement, buying a home, starting a business, or simply building an emergency fund, having clear financial goals helps you prioritize your spending and focus your efforts on what truly matters to you. The next money habit keeping you poor is neglecting your health. Neglecting your health can have significant financial consequences. Health-related expenses such as medical bills, prescription medications, and treatments can quickly deplete savings and even lead to debt if not properly managed. Additionally, poor health can impact your ability to work, resulting in lost income or reduced earning potential. Investing in your health, on the other hand, can actually save you money in the long run. By adopting healthy habits and prioritizing preventive care, you can reduce the likelihood of developing costly chronic conditions and minimize the need for expensive medical interventions. Moreover, maintaining good health can enhance your productivity, allowing you to perform better at work and potentially earn more income. Ultimately, your health and financial well-being are closely interconnected, and taking care of one often benefits the other. Making smart choices to prioritize both can lead to a more fulfilling and prosperous life. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day or night.